to meet our new students at our UCs. This webinar was organized to remark the inauguration of 2020 batch, which was on exactly one month ago. With this COVID-19 pandemic situation, access to libraries have limited, but the need of is but the need of information is increasing and the relying on, on online information is increasing more than ever. As information professionals, we have identified that it is very important to give some knowledge on online learning resources to our students, though the library access has limited. To give you the best of the knowledge, please welcome Ms. Palika Vitana, none other than the acting librarian of Uwavella Sri University. She is the best mate of mine at University of Sri Jayavadanapura at BSc level and University of Colombo at master level. Uh, one special thing that I would like to remark on her is uh, she is always being updated and she is always willing to share her experience and knowledge with others very enthusiastically. So Palika, I think this is the best time for you to enlighten our students with your experience and knowledge. Uh, then I kindly request our participants to place your questions in, your, in the chat box. At the same time, at the end of the session, we will share you a link. So you can give your views for that link. At the same time, you can get the recordings and uh, presentations as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Deshani. Uh, I think uh, I should be thankful for this opportunity to share knowledge as a librarian, and I should appreciate uh, uh, you for taking this step. The university, the directors, and the vice chancellor for taking this step to uh, uh, encourage your uh, staff members, users, uh, to learn digital information literacy because uh, it is uh, extremely important skill to learn, uh, skill to improve. Uh, we already have information literacy skills, but we have to hone them. We have to improve them. And uh, due to the current situation, we all have to uh, look into digital literacy skills. So it is important. So I think it is timely and extremely important uh, session uh, because, uh, uh, because uh, of this time period, we can't reach our users and uh, they have to use digital resources uh, and they have to know how to use them. Uh, properly. So as information professionals, it is our duty to teach them and help them with this uh, to improve their skill. So uh, I'm thankful for inviting me, Deshani. Uh, so uh, and I must thankful for to our to your vice chancellor and the director uh, for this opportunity to share knowledge to uh, providing me opportunity to share my knowledge with uh, the students and staff as well. Thank you for that. So uh, let's start our session. So what we are going to talk today, we are going to talk about digital literacy, uh, digital literacy and online learning resources. Because we are stuck at uh, random places in because because of this geographical restrictions, we have to know how to find digital uh, resources and online uh, resources uh, from internet. And we can have guides from our librarians, but uh, that is also sometimes unreachable due to this situation. So what can we do? What uh, what we can do is learning how to find those resources ourselves. So because we, uh, I think this is high time to learn uh, digital literacy and uh, let's see how to learn that. First of all, you have to know what is information is. Some people think that library is solely for books, but it is not true because it is for information. What we are doing is uh, books are uh, or information source. We store information there and we use it. So uh, it is a reliable information source. If you go to the library and ask for information, then your librarians and other information professionals will direct you, direct you to the uh, correct, the right 
uh, collection. They will give you the well, right book. But in the internet, this is not happening. So what is information? Let's see what is information. Information is everything around us. Everything is information. In, according to another definition, information is what impinge our five senses. When information can't reach our five senses, we create uh, create equipment like we, we create magnifying glasses, uh, like things to, uh, uh, to grasp it to our five senses. So uh, that is information. What we can grasp with our five senses is information. And it is not data. Some people think if you have lots of information, that is knowledge. That is incorrect because uh, information is not knowledge and it is not data. We'll see why it is. As I said before, uh, data is not information and it is not knowledge because uh, if you just see, like uh, you can see here this set of uh, letters, the digits, the, they are there, but you can't understand anything from that. That is data. They are just there. But if you want it to make, uh, if you want it to want to understand it, then you have to put it into a context. When you look at it as a e email, then it becomes like kalindu at uw.az.lk. That means you're understanding the relations. You're putting this data into uh, some place, uh, some context and saying that this data get together and forms this, uh, this, this uh, letters, they forms and forms a email. So this is an email. So your understanding relations, it is information. When you understand the relations of data, they become information. And when you go to knowledge, it is different from information because knowledge is understanding the patterns. You have this email here and you have this name here. In this field, you have names and then in this field, you have emails. So your Understanding that this email might be belong to this person. That is understanding the patterns. So it is not information. Your, your understanding that there's a relationship between these two, that is knowledge. And wisdom is understanding that this is an email belongs to Kalindu and it says uwu.ac.lk. LK stands for Sri Lanka, then this person might be a Sri Lankan or from a Sri Lankan institute. AC stands for OK, it is for academic institution. Uh, then OK, it is from academic institution. So this person is from Sri Lankan academic institution. UWU, if you know, then uh, the knowledge comes and uh, just say to you that UWE stands for Uwavelasi University. Then this person is from Uwavelasi University and this is his email. That is wisdom. You are understanding the principles and you're getting, uh, you're creating knowledge from available knowledge. So those are the differences from the differences of these words. If we have a lot of information, we can't say that we are knowledgeable. We can say, we can just say we have a lot of information, we, but we have to understand the patterns. Mm, that is the information pyramid. Information pyramid shows the relationship among these uh, words. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to transfer my knowledge to you. So if a teacher transforms her knowledge to the students, she's going to use information to transfer that knowledge. Now I'm going to, I'm using uh, visuals and my words uh, to uh, provide information regarding my knowledge. So, so my knowledge will be different from your knowledge. You are going to grasp this and your knowledge will totally different from my knowledge because with my experiences and uh, my previous uh, knowledge, my new knowledge will be created. And in your head, in your brain, uh, in the domains of your memory, 
you will find another set of information and your knowledge will be different. That's why uh, when a teacher teaches all the students in a class, that information, you're giving the same information, but they're grasping differently. They are understanding it differently. So the only way to transfer knowledge is information. So the skill of information, the uh, information literacy is an uh, essential skill for everyone. So what is the problem involving with this uh, information? With this information age, we are in an ever-expanding sea of uh, information. So we have to check whether when we get information, we have to check whether it is valid. Is it reliable? Is it authentic? What format is it from? Uh, I mean, is it a picture or uh, is, a me is it a media file or is it a book? We have to think, but we need a book, not a media file. We, we don't need a video. So we have to find the exact format what we need. And we have to know if it, if it covers uh, with proper co copyright laws. Are we stealing that? Are we stealing it from someone else's dissertation or someone else's research paper or a book? Are we giving credits, <coughs> credits for the person? Are we going to give, like, I, I took this information from this book. Are we going to do that? Can we copy this? That we have to know. So this is the problems related to information. In this information age, when you're searching information, let's say COVID-19. COVID so you're, you want to search information. You can ask your friend, what is this COVID-19? You can ask and he will give one answer. You can ask your mother. He might, he, she might give another answer. So if you can search internet and it will give loads of answers. So uh, you can't exactly say, uh, exactly grasp what you need. You can't get correct information at the correct time. That is like a librarian can give you the direct correct information at once, but Google or internet uh, web pages can't give the exact information. You have to filter that. You have to filter that yourself. So that is information literacy. Uh, if, you, uh, if you're getting lots of information, then there's a problem. That is information anxiety. When you're getting lots of information, then you, you're, you're getting confused. Is this correct? Is this authentic? Can I use this in my assignment? Uh, is it okay to copy this from this book? Uh, is it okay if I put like, I got this from this book? Uh, is it okay if I say that and take this? If I, is it okay to edit this picture? Uh, this, is this correct information? Is it wrong? Is it uh, uh, timely? Those are the problems. So you're, you'll get confused. That is, that is a huge problem we are facing today. If we search for, like, say, we are searching for vaccine, searching for the details about vaccine. We ask, if we ask different, different people, they will give different, different answers. But as academics, as researchers, as scholars, we have to find the right information, not from someone else's, uh, not from someone else, not from different, different web pages. We have to find the correct information source. So. Uh, as I said, now you can understand it is important to everyone. It is not limited to single person. So you have to search different, different places and you have to find correct information. So no one is there to help you. That's why you have to be skillful. Uh, that the solution to this information uh, at, information anxiety or information overload is information literacy. You have to be a literate person. In the past, literacy is used for like whether you can uh, read, read something, you can write, that, that is used for literacy. But information literacy uh, is uh, there, it is uh, totally a broad subject area. So let's see what it is and how to be information literate person. 
if you are an information literate person, you have to know that you need information. Some people just say that they don't know they need information. They copy things from other people uh, or to copy the assignments, copy the dissertations, even it is illegal. And they don't know what is the what is their information need. So recognizing the information need is uh, the main uh, character of information literate person and uh, determine the extent you need. You can find lots of information, but that is not uh, that is not the if you are correct and uh, rightful information literate person, you have to know what extent you need. Let's say you need information for a kid, then you can't give research papers. You can't give books if he can't read, then you have to find information. You have to know that what extent you have to give information. Let's say that kid needs information to learn about parts of the body. Then you can't give a medical book to that the medical book or you can't show it from a medical side uh, to that kid. So you have to determine the extent you need. And you have to access, when you get the information, you have to access this information effectively and efficiently. So you have to save the time and you have to get the correct information. That is extremely important. Even you have the information, you have to use it effectively and efficiently. Let's see how we can do that with digital information sources. Uh, the next thing is evaluate sources critically. When you're getting these information sources, uh, as I said before, you don't have librarians around you. You don't have information professionals around you. So it is important to you to know how to evaluate them, how to evaluate the sources by yourself critically. We can do this. We know that if we are going to the vegetable market, we, we look at the vegetable and say, oh, okay, this is uh, all vegetable. We can't, uh, uh, we have to throw this out. So this is good. And uh, things like that, they are, inf th that is information literacy. You just gather information from that vegetable and uh, you just decide, I need this. I need this vegetable and uh, it is fresh. I should take this home. It is simple as that. You're, you have to do the same thing with our resources and access uh, information ethically and legally. Most people, a lot of people steal information. Uh, like uh, if you have a dissertation thesis, you steal information from there. I'm saying stealing because you don't give credit to that person you you take this information. It is important because if you take information from somewhere, you have to give, you have to say that I took this from this side. That is important. If you don't give that credit to the uh, owner or the author, then it is unethical, Ill illegal. So that you have to know whether you're taking it without prior permission and understanding economical, legal and social issues is also important when you're uh, using, when you're uh, searching for information, when you have, when you gather the information, you have to know the legal and social issues. If you gather information for, let's say for a research, then Sometimes if it is like, uh, if it is health research, then sometimes you have to limit, uh, you have to put limitations. You have to get permission uh, to uh, expose. You can't expose the names of people you gathered information. That is, the, you're looking at the legal side, the social issues and economical side. You're doing the research, but you have to know how to present it uh, and uh, what to give to others. So. When, when you uh, gather information as an information literate person, the next thing is incorporating this information into one's knowledge base. So uh, you incorporate that information into your knowledge base. The, now I'm sharing this and uh, I'm giving my information to you like this, but it, it is going to, the information will go to your brain and 
it will gather there and it will uh, form another information knowledge base because it is it will be different from mine because you have your own experiences your own knowledge uh, so it will be different from mine my your understanding will be different from mine so that is why uh, you have to be information literate i can give my knowledge but uh, it will be go it, it will uh, transfer to you and it will be a uh, different type of knowledge uh, in your brain and uh, as i said to access ethically and legally same way you have to use it ethically and legally we are not just giving you information in as an information literate person you have to use it ethically and legally how you present it use effectively and uh, accomplish a specific purpose you're collecting information let's say you're collecting information for uh, article a research article or assignment then you have to know that uh, you're using this information uh, and it is ethical you can use this information it is correct you uh, um, access uh, it effectively and efficiently or collected them from a uh, uh, proper places uh, that you have to know and you have to uh, accomplish your specific purpose with this information if you can't accomplish that purpose with the gathered information then then there will be a problem because as a proper information literate person the gathered information should suit your need so uh, our topic is digital literacy but before coming to this with literacy you have to have a knowledge about liter information literacy digital literacy is part of that information literacy digital literacy can be like technical proficiency you have the ability uh, and knowledge uh, about hardware or software and other digital technological elements so if you have the knowledge about hardware software uh, and you can use a phone you can use a touch phone that is technical proficiency you have to know uh, how to use that and cognitive proficiency even you can use that but you don't know how to get information from that you don't know how to calculate how to solve a problem with that so you don't know how to use that if if you know uh, that is cognitive proficiency you have to reach all both the, both of this then you can be a digital literate person so i thought this is important to you because uh, as information literate persons we have to know that information goes in a cycle so uh, information sometimes we think why it is in the paper so we can trust that it is in the social media so we can trust that so that's how, that's how we are thinking but if you know the information cycle you know you have to critically think about this uh, when when you look at uh, let's say first first ever time you heard about covid 19 uh, it is not covid 19 uh, we heard it as a virus virus is spreading in china so we heard it through social media and gossip uh, from our friends or from tv and radio uh, can we trust that source we can't trust it as like uh, we can't trust whether we don't know what it is about we don't get lots of information regarding that incident from this so minutes or hours after some kind of an incident the information goes to gossip social media tv or radio it, but with time the information regarding the, this incident get accumulated and it will be posted in newspapers then they will say there's a there's this uh, uh, virus going on. There's this virus and uh, the China, uh, some one region of that China is closed because of this virus. It's spreading. Some people are dying. Still, we can't believe this. Is it due to a virus? Is it due to some kind of uh, uh, some other uh, thing that we don't know? We think days after, after days, it's, it'll go to newspapers. Can we trust the newspapers? One one time uh, there will be one article. The next time it will be edited, or uh, we'll get another uh, 
point of view about the same thing, different point of view regarding the same thing. So it goes there and still we we can't trust it like uh, it is the truth. We can't say that. So information, uh, this information also we have to look at it in a critical way. It can be true, but it, it reached the newspapers after like days. So we have to gather more information. We have to uh, wait and see. OK, after weeks the the incident will be reported in uh, magazines and uh, weekly newspaper, weekend newspapers, so they will gather more information. Then you can uh, trust that a little bit and they will they will uh, like compare it with other things. Uh, the COVID-19 thing, so it is a virus. There are different types of viruses spreading. History also have reports like this, so they will talk about history and we we know that similar things happen. OK, so that is also information. So this information getting uh, another other sources which proves that this is true. So we can trust a little bit, but yet we have to be critical about it and months after this incident it will reach the scholarly articles scholarly journals what will happen researchers will start to research on that topic and they will find information regarding this they will look into history they will in look into the genetics of this virus they will look into the pathology of this uh, and everything they will look into the population uh, who's again getting eff affected by this genotypes everything so yet if one researcher produced an art article then it will be reviewed by many other subject specialists so now we can trust that information source because it reached scholarly documents that's why we we are going for scholarly journals and documents then because we can trust that we can uh, trust the information we are getting from there there also there are problems there are index journals pipe uh, uh, there are journals which are not reviewed so those are those problems are there that is the that we can uh, as information literate person we can recognize those things as well so so we can look clearly okay this is a scholarly journal and it is reviewed and everyone uh, like reviewers checked it uh, and everyone recognizes it as a uh, scholarly journal or document so we can trust this information and here's or oh, year or years after that, this this information reach uh, will reach your textbooks, books. So if you can't find any information from a book, you can look at the uh, journals. If you if you can't find the books in the library, you can look at the journals. I always say this to our students. If you can't find the book, you can find the journals. We'll find the journals, uh, the, the research papers written by same author because they are doing research on that. Uh, and then those information will be passed to these books. Most of the time it is happening like that. So we know that uh, before reaching books, it will reach journals so after a year it will reach books so we are we know that textbooks we are trusting because many people read that many people review that and uh without a proper review process these books will uh these books will not reach our library so ebooks as well so uh after these books it will reach reference material Materials. I know students usually don't uh, look at the dictionaries or thesaurus or uh, like uh, encyclopedias. They don't go to that section. They don't look at the section. But it is important. You can use even uh, Google uh, Google uh, facilities to find synonyms or uh, dictionary facilities. Uh, you can use that. Why it is important if you're searching about, let's say, information literacy, if you're searching about some kind of information, you have to know about that. Then you have to uh, have a general idea first. 
to to the to get this general idea you have to go to this section this reference section it will refer refer to uh, encyclopedia if it is an encyclopedia it will give you a picture also this is what uh, a virus look like this is this is the information cycle this is a dog something like that so then you can narrow down like I don't want to know details about viruses. I, I want to know virus. Uh, I want to know details about COVID-19 virus. So it, it is a new thing. So uh, I uh, if it is not updated, it can't be reached uh, encyclopedias yet, but within a year it can reach it. Uh, if you find, uh, let's say a dog, uh, as an example, if you take the dog, you can say, what is this dog? If you don't know, you can search it in the encyclopedia. Then you can find the word dog and you can find a picture. So you know, okay, this is the dog. Let's say we, you don't know, okay? So, uh, oh, this is a dog. So I want information about dog. So where should I check? So it's a mammal, it has four legs, uh, the, the, the uh, encyclopedia might say. And uh, if you go for another word, the, the, like uh, you can find if you can use a thesaurus and uh, thesaurus and search for synonyms antonyms uh, they, these are important as keywords you're going to find keywords you're you're using keywords in uh, google search also when you're going to search information literacy you have to know the keywords then you can find correct information so these keywords are given by these references so that is important. Uh, I think you have a clear idea about information cycle and now you can filter information and you, you know what to trust and what not to trust. So searching for information, as I said before, there are printed information sources and there are digital information sources. There are other types of information sources such as people because people are also information uh, sources specialists uh, if we know uh, want to know something when we we are going to ask a specialist uh, we are, if you want information you are going to ask your librarian about that information and how to find that information she is specialized in that and she'll advise you regarding uh, that so she's also information source printed information, digital information, and people are also information sources. So we are going to concentrate about digital information sources. So uh, when we ask people, why don't you go to the library? Most of the time say, they say, okay, I'm searching internet, I have internet. I don't want to go to the library to everything because I, I have the internet, I can search that. But uh, do you know how to search? internet that is important are you searching the internet truly because internet is not world wide web what you're doing is you're searching world wide web it is a facility provided by the internet so internet is interconnected network of books uh, the interconnected network of digital devices such as phone phones uh computers, uh, all those things connected with network cables and all that around the world globe. And this internet provide facility, uh, it is worldwide web. It provides access to uh, web pages. And internet also provide other facilities such as uh, email. So uh, what we are searching is we are searching World Wide Web. We have to have a clear understanding what we are doing. Then we can search. It is important to know what we are doing. So now onwards, you know that Internet is not World Wide Web and uh, it is a facility provided by Internet. And in, within this World Wide Web, what we can find, we can find browsers. Browsers help us to find web pages. So web pages, uh, if you go to a uh, browser and search, you can find web pages in that browser. So within web pages, there are hyperlinks. Hyperlinks, when you press one link, uh, that link, then it will direct, it to another, direct you to another web page. So those are hyperlinks. So they are linked. If you go to Wikipedia and click, uh, uh, click on a link, then it will direct it to somewhere else, some other web page. 
And here, what we have in this web page, we have multimedia. There are sounds, video, text, graphics, all those are there. Why we have those things? Because uh, it needs to give information to you, which will be grasped by your five senses. So, uh, when we are when we say that we are searching the web, we have the web to search. So we don't want anything. We have the web. What you're searching? What you're searching in the web? That's that. Uh, when you're searching web, let's say when you're searching Wikipedia or Google or Bing or uh, whatever Facebook. Whatever you search, you're searching this surface web. You're just touching the surface of this big, huge iceberg. This is a uh, iceberg as a web analogy. Uh, this huge iceberg is web, and you're just touching this. That's why when he, we have a institutional repository uh, in our university, and we have access to journals. Uh, it, it can't be accessed by the outsiders if we if we don't provide access outsiders can't access that why it is in this deep web it is stored in this deep web other academic information uh like uh, government uh, resources and uh, scientific re report subscription information they are all stored in this deep web and we go down to this uh, dark web there you will find illegal information and uh, drug drugs drug trafficking sites all those things are there in that dark web so when we are searching the web it is not the web but the surface we touch uh, when you're searching you have to have the as, as the now we are going to be information literate person so you have to know uh, the search operators if you use like uh, at in front of like this at uh, in front of a word like facebook then it will direct you uh, to the it will direct you to the uh, uh, facebook site so it will direct you to the social media site similarly if you use this dollar symbol uh, then it will dollar symbol and a number if you type like that they are operators so if you type like that it will give you a, a, a price some kind of a price so if you put this hashtag in front of a word even in a social media it means it will gather all the things with that hashtag hashtag let's say hashtag library uh, one created this hashtag library uh, uh, for some purpose then all things under that hashtag library will gather uh, as your search findings and if you put quotations when you're searching you don't put quotations but if you uh, put double quotations like if you search dig digital library you will get information if you just search digital library without quotations then uh, it will direct you to digital uh, word documents with word digital and documents with word library but if you uh, use double quotations it will direct you to both uh with this exact word digital library so if you want to find exact words then you have to go to this uh exact phrase uh, the quotations double quotations so let's say you have to type a range like range of numbers then you have to uh, use this full stops full stops between two numbers let's say dollar uh this much of dollars to uh two thousand dollars hundred and uh, thousand hundred and uh, thousand five hundred fifty dollars to two thousand dollars within this range you have to search within this range if you want to search you have to use this uh, dot if you want to uh, search a specific site let's say garment then you can use this site site then uh, colon mark colon mark plus site site if you put like this site and con mark and uh, gov then only documents which 
have this uh, extension will you will uh, uh, domain you will reach uh, only those uh, findings. If you use uh, related, then edupub.gov.lk. If you use related and colon mark, then it will provide you with similar findings like edupub.gov.lk. Okay, if uh, there are uh, similar findings like uh, educational.gov.lk or uh, let's say. Uh, another gov.lk sites, they, you will reach those. So uh, related findings will be there. And if you go for, now, now sometimes the uh, information might not be there, then you can go for cached version of the site. If the site is not there, then you can go for cached version. Cached version is something like, uh, it is, it was there before now it is not there but it stores a it's an it stores a older version of that site so you can go for that uh, then there are boolean search if you want to search like uh, let's say if you want to search uh, request both terms to be in each uh, item to be in uh, if you want both both terms like cat and dog you uh, you want to search cat and dog you can use this and form cat and dog you can search like that or if you want cat uh, the search uh, web pages related to cat or you want web pages related to dog so then you can use cat or dog. So uh, then uh, either term you can you can reach cat. Okay, you can reach dog uh, findings. I mean web pages containing those two or both. If 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 the web page have both, then you will reach that. And uh, exclude a website from a search. You can use this. You can use minus site. Uh, you have to say what site you are going to exclude. So that that simple site will be excluded. Uh, and this uh, tied, no, tied symbol, if you use this uh, tied symbol, if you use that, you can uh, reach synonyms of the words. You can like say uh, you are going to say happy. You, you reach synonyms of that words also. You will reach, uh, you will get the synonyms, happiness, uh, bliss, things like that. And as I said before, with double quotations, if you were, uh, put a word within double quotations, it will reach the exact phrase. Uh, so I think you all know about URLs. Uh, let's go to this link later. First, I'll show you this. URL is uniform resource locator. It is like an address to a web page. Uh, so uh, uh, you usually, if you want to find it, like our students, if they want to find some resource, but it is not allowed, then they'll send us the URL. They are sending us the location of this web page. It is like an address. This can change. It can be uh, in the web, uh, the main uh, page sometimes, but uh, later it can change its location. The resource can change its uh, its location. So uh, I should compare this with DOI. DOI is like uh, web, the information, the name of that uh, resource, name of that. Uh, uh, it is digital object identifier. So name will not change. It is exact. Within this huge network internet, if you want to find the, a document, you can use either DOI or URL, but URL can change. You can use the same URL, but it might not direct you to the same place. So you have to know that. And this URL has different, different parts of. So uh, HTTP is a protocol. Uh, this is Google is a domain, and uh, this is a path which uh, it gives the path. Uh, okay, may, may harila, may harila, like, uh, turn to this side and turn to this that side, something like that. It says it is there, this 
this uh, fragment is what we are searching for it is there so you have to turn like this and turn like that so uh, you have to go to the uh, google search engine then uh, they are they are uh, if uh, if you go to that they are uh, uh, to go google domain then you can find this within those that network so it gives a path so this path can change but understanding this uh, path is important then you know if the where from where this resource can, came from uh, the word edu is as i said before it is for education and gov for government and org for organization and uh, there's uh, like lk is for sri lanka the country tags are also there i provided the link here uh, so uh, you can have further information I, i'm going to share this uh, slides later so you can have you can get uh, into further information with this. Here you have all the information about URL. So uh, uh, it is in detail format. So you can find uh, what this says. So what is COM, what is GOV, EDU. So everything is there. So you you can find more information regarding URL from here. And I want to uh, let you know one thing that is learning URL, uh, understanding the structure is important. Then we know that it is from a government website or it is from an institution, an educational institution, where it come from. If it is a personal website, there's a way to understand, uh, recognize that there can be a tide mark like this or a percentage mark or name of the owner can be there within this uh, url then it can be a personal website if you're referring to a personal website if it is not a government institute then you have to be careful because uh, it can anyone can make a make a document today in today's world anyone can create information that is our problem anyone uh, can create incorrect information so you have to check if that person uh, has the knowledge or uh, from where he come from and uh, you have to analyze this resource and analyze the person who uh, who's this resource come from so with this uh, with this uh, you can recognize that it is from a personal website it can be from a personal website and uh, that personal website might be belongs to a specialist in that. So that we have to learn, we have to check the credentials. There are advanced search techniques. Uh, let's say you're going to the Google, uh, I'm going to the Google. Okay. Uh, So you're going to search for a library. You can just search like this, as I said before, or you can search the exact term like this. Okay, still you're getting lots of results. So what you can do is you can limit these results you have to find because you are an information literate person you have to uh, know uh, from where this information comes from so you are are you searching for maps or are you searching for images videos what are you searching for and uh, you can use this advanced searching tools like you can get results from uh, past year let's say uh, if you search for past year's results, then it will give you results, new results. And uh, you can also, uh, you can also uh, search like this. You can go to tools and filter them. Then uh, exact, if the exact words are there, then it will give you the exact 
uh, only the results with exact words what we are using. So you can search for an image. You can give a date, you can search for an image. Anyone can use this uh, and search for an image, but is it ethical to get all these images? Lots of images I am appearing. Can we use all of them? If you're using any of them, you have to say that I took this from here or there. If not, that is not uh, like it is not ethical. So uh, let's say I want to search for library, but there's something called usage rights. If you want to uh, find images which are freely available to use, then you can go for that. You're going to search for Creative Commons license. So these are under Creative Commons license. Oh, okay, I can use these images because they are under Creative Commons license. You can go further and check whether you can edit this or you have to uh, use it as it is. Uh, sometimes uh, there are restrictions even with the Creative Commons license. You have to know the level of that. Or you can search for commercial and other licenses as well. So if you want to search for a book, you can search like this. So you're searching for a book or a map, or if you are searching for an image, I said before, you can uh, you can just search for red color images, or you can uh, just search for uh, line drawing. Okay, so or you can change the size. So that that is using Google advanced searching tools. Uh, the similar way you are, when, when you came across with things like Sage or uh, other research uh, uh, journal uh, websites, you can search uh, with these advanced searching tools. It is different. Sometimes uh, most of the things are similar, but some things are different. They explain that if you search like this, you can find this. So you have to check with that site whether it is, you can search it and uh, take the information. Uh, so advanced searching tools can be different from these uh, two, uh, one, uh, one uh, search database to another. So let's go to website evaluation. So if you came across with a website, then you have to find whether it is uh, accurate, you, whether it is, uh, whether proper authority is there, uh, what is the objective of this article, uh, if it is current or uh, if it is uh, like, uh, if it is uh, up to date, that is the currency. If it is up to date, or what are the things covered by this? Is it only the Sri Lanka is covered by this, or uh, the world is covered by this? What are the links provided? Are they are working? So, uh, if you go for accuracy again, then you have to check. This this stands for AAOCC stands for Website Evaluation Technique. So uh, you can use this technique to evaluate the web pages. I have provided uh, more information here. It is, look at this, it is, uh, it is uh, Princeton University Library uh, web page. So I know this is reliable. So this resource is uh, from Princeton University web page and it says edu here. OK, I can trust this. That is information literacy. When you find information, you have to think where you're getting this information from. So uh, or you have to check if it is from a person, uh, if that person has the right credentials. So accuracy is who wrote this, who wrote this web document. And uh, is he, uh, he, he's qualified enough to write this document. Those things uh, we have to check. That is accuracy and authority. Who published this? Who's the webmaster? Who is it belongs to a academic domain? So you can trust it because it will be evaluated by someone else. It will be checked by someone else. So it will be used by lots of people. So uh, 
uh, that we have to check. That is authority and objectivity. Uh, what goals, why this is created, what are the objectives uh, of this? So if it is for children, then it is useless because it is targeting children. We need it for university students. Then we have to, the object, if the objective is different, then it is useless to us. So that is objectivity. If this do, uh, To whom the objective of this document, what is the objective of the, the, this document? And currency, is it uh, new? Is it updated? Uh, I see lots of like web, lots of web pages with uh, not the, the the content page is not updated. When we call someone, like uh, if we call someone, then it directed to uh, a person who was there two years, three years back. So it is not updated. So we have to check whether uh, whether it is current, it is updated, whether it is updated. That we have to check. And we have to check if you use an old document, it is useless because we have to get the updated document. If you use a document regarding COVID-19 from uh, about COVID-19 from like 2020 uh, July, then it will be, uh, it, it is, uh, July, July is okay. But now how much information, new information come? But because of that, we have to find the current information. We have to find the updated information. We have to check the time it is updated. And covering, uh, is it, it gives the full coverage. What are the links available? Are they, the links are working? The, uh, can we access these links and uh, whether it is directed to more information? Uh, that we have to check. And by looking at a web page, you can say, okay, this is created by a professional. No, it is not created by a professional. So this might be, a, uh, uh, this is, this might be created by someone uh, just for fun that we can say. So it is like, it that also we have to check uh, uh, that that's website evaluate, evolution, evaluation and then this subject, uh, this, this is search engines. This is search engines. There's an error. Okay. So, okay. This is search. Now we are going to talk about search engines. There are lots of search engines. Some just use Google. Some just use you, uh, Yahoo. But uh, they are they are de uh, designed for different purposes. Like Google is a free text search engine. If you search that, if you search Google, then uh, in a network, uh, those that if you search like let's say library, you will get lots of information you will get this much of information if you search library in google because it's a free text information free free text uh, search engine so but if you search in yahoo let's say yahoo or megalon it is indexed based search engine then it is uh, it divides its information its uh, web pages according it's uh, according to an index, like a uh, topic index, subject index is there. So if you search the same term, like library, if you search for library here, you will not get that much of information you got from the uh, Google search because it is a free free text search engine and it will give this much of results, but this will put it into like uh, indexes. Uh, okay, this is uh, this is entertainment and this is education things like that. It will separate it, so it will give uh, limited results than that. So uh, Yahoo indexed uh, is a indexed search engine. Similarly, we have if we get less information it is good because uh, that means they are indexing the information there are uh, the other uh, forms as well megalon is also an index based search engine 
and they are so meta search engine meta search engines uh, there's an example dog pile uh, okay it's here dog pile if i search library here let's see so it gives limited information because it is the search engine which filters information from other search engine search engine for search engines so it will give limited more specific results uh, this uh, this will give the meta search engine will give more specific results there's there are other things like meta crawler also a meta search engine it will filter uh, the information which is get from other search engines so it is a search engine for search engines uh, and natural la language search engine uh, ask is natural language search engine you can just ask a question there there you can ask what is covid something like that You can ask a question. Uh, what is COVID? You can just ask a question. So it will find answers for that question. Uh, there's other search engines like cluster search engines. Uh, example is search cube. They are clustering information uh, according to the subject top subject so uh, it will be clustered and it will be more specific here they clustered information and it will be more specific uh, they they will uh, cluster information the uh, according to the clustering search engine will cluster information according to the subject area and there's subject directories we have an example here subject directories uh, there are common subject uh, subject directories there's a, also they are called su subject gateways there are common subject gateways which are created for uh, cre reaching for common goal or specific subject gateways then sp subject specialists get together and form this uh, subject directories then you can find information like uh, you can find all the educational information there, then it is a specific subject gateway. Or you can find a common subject, uh, common subjects, uh, information regarding common subjects, like uh, information essentially needed by public in Sri Lanka. That's what we need, uh, did with this uh, SLLA, SLLA gateway. We created this SLLA gateway. It is a common subject gateway, but libraries get together to uh, uh, create it. And we create it because of this COVID-19 situation. Uh, people need to need access to information. And we gathered what are the most needed information. So uh, there are repositories. You can also search this. Uh, this will be important to you. So there are newspapers and newsletters. There are OPEX online public access catalogs from other universities, information repositories, journals. Uh, some journals you might uh, not have access to them and some books as well, but uh, some journals you might have access. So uh, so this, this uh, gateway is designed by spe subject specialists considering what you will be needing. So. Uh, what will be needed by the Sri Lankan community. Then look, uh, that uh, this says reading materials, reference materials, syllabus and school materials. So it is for school students, teaching and learning materials. There are resources for librarians as well. So we developed this uh, by our academic librarians group uh, in a SL Sri Lankan Library Association. So you can use this resource. Uh, to find information. So it is a subject gateway. And there are other extensions, useful extensions, uh, such as Mendeley. If you look, uh, look here, I have this Mendeley web importer. Uh, 
this uh, small extension link logo is there mentally. Let's search for that. Wait. Uh, mentally, uh, it is important to you, then you can uh, you can access some information you can't access to other, like you can go to the deep web with this and it will provide information which you can't access any other way, but it is not to access information. It is truly designed to, uh, uh, as a, uh, uh, it is a plugin uh, you can use. It's a reference manager. If I open my Mendeley, if I search for a, a web page, then I can store it. I have to sign in and I can store it in a, uh, directory in a library. So I'm going to store my uh, web page here. So I can download it to my uh, desktop with uh, with another extension which belongs to Mendeley. I'm not going to give uh, going to details with this, but I can download it and I can give my references. There you have you don't have to uh, put references uh, like it's a hectic work putting references, giving references. You can uh, use any style and you can give the references with tools like Mendeley. You can just save with this. You can you can you have to have a uh, account and you you can uh, work with this. To store and uh, for managing your references, you can share your references with your friends and there's Google Translator. This is extremely important. I think most of you might have using this Google Translator uh, because you can translate your documents here. You can say, uh, type something and you can convert it to any language. Singhala also there. So. also there so it will be translated not this you can uh, translate a huge document uh, there, there are certain limitations but part by part you can translate but it will not give the exact translation like if you are, if a translator translate that then it, they will give a correct version of the translation but they this this will translate it word by word so it is not correct but you can use this. Let's say you, you found a French book, then you can translate this French book to English and understand or single and understand. So you can use this translator and there's other things like Google Lens. Uh, you can uh, insert this Google Lens to your phone and you can just uh, scan your book uh, with the Google Lens. You just have to scan it and uh, you can translate the document or find that exact book from somewhere or get a review about that. And there's this EndNote click. Uh, EndNote click is inserted here, as you can see. Uh, when I when I can't find uh, a research paper, I go to that link. If uh, it is it is legal, it provides a legal access. So uh, because uh, there are some other uh, formats like you have you are stealing from. Uh, institutional repositories from uh, other places, but this is legal. So you can use and not click uh, to search uh, information and Google books to search uh, books. It is important to you because uh, the, the, some of the parts will be removed from the book, but most of the books are available there. So you can take one part of that book and access it for your reference. And Grammarly is there. Grammarly is highly important tool uh, because let's say there's this document in my Google Drive. So if I make a grammatical mistake, it shows that. If you use Grammarly, it search for that and it, it'll just suggest something. So grammatical corrections and uh, spelling corrections, it'll help you to do spelling corrections and grammatical cor corrections in the drive and uh, Facebook and uh, your Google email account. Uh, so 
uh, this uh, Grammarly you can insert into your uh, your uh, Google Drive or you can download it to desktop. Uh, so there are different different versions. You can use them all. Uh, it is there. And Google Drive is impo uh, another important tool. Uh, I will come to that. And Google Scholar is there. Google Scholar. I have all the extensions here. Uh, this is the Google Scholar account. So it will give you the filtered Scholar documents. Without searching for like, without searching Google, go and search in Google Scholar because it is, uh, it will give you uh, the scholarly documents. So it will be filtered. It, it will filter the scholarly documents and give the scholarly documents to you. Let's say I'm searching for non predatory journals, predatory journals or whatever. So without giving like all the results from all the people, it will give you the scholarly documents, what you can trust. Uh, I showed you this, uh, the circle, the uh, how information goes in a circle. So this is a reliable information. So go and search in Google Scholar. It will be important be because it will give you the books, uh, journals and other reliable publications. So the last thing I'm going to talk about is Google Drive. So you can use Google Drive uh, to you uh, to uh, make your documents because it is easy when you create a Google account. You have this facility uh, freely available to you. You you will have the facility to use Google Drive and there are Google uh, Sheets, may, uh, namely Docs, uh, Sheets, Slides. You can create PDF uh, like uh, Google Sheets. Excel sheets with this or documents like in uh, MS Word, but online and you can share share them. So it is uh, easy for us and you two people, three people can get together. Uh, if you are getting an ex uh, if you get an assignment, you can use this. So it is also how to use how to uh, present. That is also uh, important as information literate persons. Uh, so that's why I'm saying about Google Drive. Yeah, then you can uh, uh, present it properly by, uh, because you, you have lots of tools available here, freely available to you. So you can share this with uh, your colleagues. So uh, here I can share, share it with my colleague and both of us can, edit it in the same time. Or as I said before, I can use Grammarly to check my grammar. Without doing it in uh, my desktop, I'm doing it in Google Drive, in uh, Sheets, uh, in Docs. Similar way, you can create new, uh, new uh, Google, uh, new Docs or new uh, Sheets, or you can create slides or Google Forms. I think we already shared a Google Form with you to give your feedback uh, or we'll be sharing a form. So we are creating these forms with Google Forms. So if you want to collect information from other people, then you can uh, easily use Google Forms to create information, uh, collect information. Like if you want to get information from your uh, batch, you can collect those information with these Google Forms. Uh, so uh, you can use a lot of resources here. That's why uh, this is uh, Google Drive is important and it is freely available and uh, th this this is a university purchased version. So the other version also 30, 15 GB is available uh, for us to upload anything. You can just drag one uh, document from the uh, desktop and you, you can put it there. Let's, let's see, you can drag it and here you can put it. If you want to translate a document, you can simply translate the document. Let's say tools. Or let's say voice typing, you can do voice typing because I feel uh, 
I want to type it. Uh, then, then I can just uh, start voice typing. Uh, or you can use Google Translate. I can type in Sinhal also here. You can use this file language and select Sinhala language. OK, then you have to select Sinhala. Then like your typing uh, uh, messages, you can type. You, you can type like this. Or you can do, do different different things with this document. You can share it and together you can uh, like uh, I put uh, my friend there and together you can edit this document. Uh, similarly, there are a lot of things you can do uh, uh, with Google Drive. So it is also a skill. So it is a technology new, uh, uh, new, and uh, it is updating. So you can use such technologies. It is uh, using these technologies is also a uh, information literate skill. So what we talked so far is how to become information literate person. So you have to have uh, critical thinking skills and evaluation skills to find information and uh, understand the information you're getting. It is important what you, to understand what you need and it is important to evaluate that. And uh, you have to use it uh, in a right place in a right manner. So you can't steal information. You have to give the credits and uh, you have to uh, you have to have the practical and functional skills. You have to know practically how to use this and you have to have the creativity. Should we uh, prepare a video document or a picture? Can we show this in a picture? Is it easy to go for a mind map like this? Is it easy uh, or uh, we have to provide a document for this? That is information literacy. So. Uh, and. Uh, you have to uh, gather information, as I said before, and you have to uh, give right credit to the person you're getting that information from. That is important. Important when we are uh, making an article, you might think that uh, I should say that I produce this, but most important thing is you have to gather information from everywhere, all the other professionals and uh, researchers. Then you can say I got this information from this person or that person. That is a good scholarly document, good assignment. So that is it. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I thank you very much for this opportunity to share knowledge. There are lots of things uh, I can say, I can teach uh, because uh, there's no limit to this information literacy and it is still stay, it is uh, changing. And uh, it is uh, with technology, the digital literacy, we have to have like updated knowledge with it. Uh, yes, Palika, thank you very much. So I Thank think you. this is a very important session uh, because uh, actually we think what is the internet, uh, we don't know about the iceberg, only ju we just search but in, on the surface internet. Actually, we don't know what is we are going to search or what, is this information reliable. So you gave a good knowledge to our students. So I think they will manage how to find uh, good information from the internet. So the session was very interesting and I learned as well from you. Uh, so I, I, I make this opportunity to thank our director, Mr. Chandika Dadiyama. Uh, then our lecturer panel, 
and uh, Ms. Chaturika Dilhan from Uwabella University. She is the assistant registrar of uh, library service at the Uwabella University. So she gave us a uh, supporting hand. Uh, then uh, Ms. Palika. So, uh, and to the all participants, I would like to thank. So you, I invite all students to take this opportunity to find uh, good information, reliable information, and go to your success. 